Hello and welcome to KAUST Live. We're coming to you from the Winter Enrichment Programme, KAUST's annual Festival of Science. This year's theme is... But how much do we really know about the physics, the cultural impact and the feeling of time? Here to speak to us today about the slow food movement is International Secretary of the International Board of Directors of the Slow Food Movement, Paolo De Croce. Paolo, it's an honour. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, and it's a pleasure to be here. Um, so I wanted to ask you a question. We live in a time where fast food and slow food exist. Why, why can't we just call it food? <laughs> it would be great. It's one of the challenges, because, uh, but unfortunately, uh, the, the food production and the system that has run the world in the last uh, 70 years, we can say, has transformed food uh, sometimes in a commodity, has transformed food in something that is only fuel and something that we eat because we have to survive and not we eat because it's uh, part of our identity, it's part of our culture, it's part of our history, it's part of our tradition. We always say we are what we eat. So it would be great to have one food that could represent really, really who we are and from where we come from. But uh, unfortunately, this is not the case, and it's the reason why we, we, we exist to try to have a shift, a paradigm shift in the way the food is produced and the way the food is uh, consumed. I like thinking about that paradigm shift. Um, coming back a little bit, uh, could you tell us a bit about the slow food philosophy, uh, how it all started and, and how you came to be involved? Yeah, we, we, we were born uh, now 30 years ago in, uh, in Italy, in the northwest of Italy, in a, in a small place. And uh, the legend says that we, we opened when, uh, when a McDonald's uh, restaurant uh, opened in uh, one of the most historical squares in Rome, in Italy, Piazza di Spagna. So we said <laughs> it's not possible to accept that. And, uh, and we thought that uh, the future for our planet, for our people, could not be only to be condemned to eat uh, the same hamburger everywhere in the, in the world. Mm. So we started with a movement uh, trying to focus on the culture of food, the cultural aspect of food, the environmental aspect of food, the fact that the diversity of food. Because we think that good food is everywhere and we should have the right to eat our own food that is part of our history and our, our, our culture. Then the movement evolved. Today we are in 150 countries, we reach uh, regularly over 1 million, 1 million people and we, we fight, we exist to promote uh, what we say a good, clean and fair food system. Mm -hmm. Good refers to the quality, so when we eat we, we should have pleasure from what we, what we eat and healthy because we all know unfortunately the big impact of uh, bad food and too much food on our health. Uh, clean because the industrial food production is causing so many problems to the environment, to the soil, uh, to the loss of biodiversity, to the water. And we think that the food that we eat should, have, uh, should be environmentally friendly and fair, because we think that too many food producers, too many farmers all over the world, they do not earn enough money for the job they do, even if uh, too often we pay a high price for the food that we, that we buy. So good, clean and fair food, good, clean and fair defines the, the quality food that we want to promote and we work all over the world to promote from the consumption side and from the production side. Mm. Good, clean and fair. Good, clean and, and fair. Food something that affects us all. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, what is the terra madre and how does it work? Terra madre is this Italian name to say Mother Earth because the idea was at the beginning to use this name because everything starts from there. And it's important to preserve our planet Earth because with uh, industrial food, with chemicals, with fertilizers, with a lot of bad practices, we are, uh, I can say destroying, I think it's the right word to say and to define what is, what is happening. And starting from that concept, we started uh, now more than uh, uh, 15 years ago to build a a global network also of food producers, of good, clean and fair food producers. And today Terra Madre represents um, around 2,000 food communities, so a group of people all over the world that they produce good, clean and fair food that they would like to, uh, to grow and they would like to uh, reach the, the market and reach as many people as possible. Fantastic. Uh, and that's just one of uh, the Slow Food International's initiatives. Um, could you tell us more about uh, Slow Food 
initiatives around the world? Absolutely. There are, there are clearly many because uh, food is such a complex issue that puts together so many uh, issues and, and items. And uh, you, you have to tackle food on, uh, with a holistic approach. But if we have to, to try to be schematic and to summarize, I would say that the main activities that we organize are referring to two main uh, areas. One is food education. Because if you don't know the food uh, that you eat, if you don't know the form the food comes from, if you know the impact of food on the environment, on yourself, on your life, on the others, it's, import it's uh, not possible to enjoy the food that you eat. So we have programs starting from the schools, starting from the young guys, up to the adults, up to everyone to really try to, on one end, to uh, create consciousness and awareness and knowledge about, uh, about food. And uh, because we think that today there is not enough uh, awareness. And as I said at the beginning, to, sometimes you, know, you only eat because you, you, you think that you have to survive, but you don't care. Forgetting that as again, we are what we eat. So it's very important to know what, what, uh, what we eat. Uh, on the other, and the other program is what we call, uh, we can briefly summarize in defense of uh, biodiversity, in the sense that uh, we are losing the diversity of our food. To give you a very simple example, 90% of the apples that are eaten globally are coming from five different varieties, only five. And there are thousands and thousands different varieties of apples. And we think that it's important to preserve these varieties for environmental reasons, for cultural reasons, mm -hmm. for, and also for financial reasons. Because we think that if you produce quality and if you have the real food, you can uh, not only enjoy the food that you eat, but you can also make money from that. Gosh, just five varieties of apples? Only five, 90%. And then, the they, global market. And then they're sent all around the world? Absolutely. Wow. Um, and as you've already alluded to, food production has a huge impact on sustainability and the environment. Um, can you tell us a bit more about some of the, the key issues in that yeah. area? There are many, but just to mention maybe one that's now, it's, uh, it's really on the public agenda of all the governments and all the companies, that is climate change. Uh, apart from few people, we all know that not only climate change is an issue for the future, it's already an issue. It's already creating so many troubles and problems in many different countries in the, in the world. And the, we don't know, <clears throat> too many people don't know that uh, food production, and in, in especially industrial food production, is one of the main reasons to affect climate change. We all feel guilty when we travel, and it's, and it's correct, because transport is the... Uh, is the, is the main, it's one of the main causes uh, mm. creating climate change. But food mm. is the same. Mm. Food has the same impact. When we eat meat uh, twice a day, uh, if you think to all the way the, food, the, the meat is produced with industrial uh, breeding of cows, of pigs, of chickens, uh, we have a big impact on climate change. So the important message is that uh, we have to care about also the environmental issues. And the big news is that every one of us, with simple daily choices, we can help to improve the situation. Eating less meat is just an example, but I could give many others. Oh, well, I'm pleased you said that, because that brings us on to uh, a phrase I discovered recently, eco-gastronomy. Um, I was wondering, could you tell us a bit about uh, the link between plate and planet? As you, as that you it's, uh, it's what we, we are saying. Eco-gastronomy is to try to put all the environmental aspects in... Uh, in what we produce and what we eat. And again, and I know also that in this country it's very, uh, it's getting important and it's getting, at least there is curiosity about organic food. You know, uh, and we use clean, we don't want to use the word organic even if it's very important, but clean in the sense that uh, if you think to the, all the pesticides, if you think to all the chemicals that has been used in agriculture with the, with the reason of saying, uh, uh, we have to produce more because we need to, f to feed the planet. It's not true. To feed the planet, we do not have to produce more. It's not true that we have to use chemicals to produce, uh, to produce more to feed the planet. So, because it's not good for the planet and it's not good for ourselves. So uh, it's very important to talk about environment, but again, it's very important to think in a broader way to put all the different connections together. For this reason, good, clean and fair. So environment, social justice, healthcare, culture, and also pleasure. Mm. Mm. Thanks, Paolo. Um, and I, I wanted to run a fact past you today. Um, according to the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, the FAO, 
an estimated one third of all food produced for human use, valued at one trillion, is lost or wasted each year. Where are we going wrong? That is one of the, I don't know if I can define a tragedy, but it is a tragedy. And if you think that we live in a planet where 800 million people are starving, they have no access to food. And as I said, we use chemicals to produce more. We use GMO, we invent dangerous uh, for ourselves and for the planet new technologies because we need to produce more without realizing the data and the figures that you just said. And it's, of course it's wrong. We have, a lot of, uh, uh, we have a lot of programs to try to create awareness and to create uh, education around the fact that we should waste uh, less, uh, less food. And it's simple. And then sometimes, t touching another point, so very often people say that good food uh, is too expensive, that we have not enough money to pay for and to buy good food. And then we do not realize that we throw away 40% of the food that we buy. It's money. You know, even if I always say that even if we are not interested in environment, in, in ethic, because it's not ethical to waste food, but only think about money. We are wasting 40% of our money. Let's waste less. Let's save some money from that and let's spend a little bit more money to buy the good quality, good, clean and fair quality food and not the industrial junk food that is affecting the environment and our life. Mm. And uh, I, I saw an interesting app uh, recently that allowed you to create recipes from the leftover food that you had in your cupboards or your fridge. So perhaps being creative with the, the things that you have left over in, in the kitchen as that, well. That's could a be, key. Could be one that's way. a key. In fact, one of our programs on food waste is to organize parties mm -hmm. and dinners, only cooking uh, leftovers. Taste the waste. To give you an idea about uh, how we work, once we organize like uh, a dinner, uh, only with leftovers for 1,000 people in Berlin, in Germany, under the Brandenburg Gate. Wow. And at that dinner, the Minister of Agriculture, the German, Federal German Minister of Agriculture, came to attend the dinner to try to create uh, awareness, to, to make advocacy, to make uh, you know, campaigns, uh, to make people aware. So recipes, cooking. Uh, cooking could be a, a great tool and a great solution to try to change uh, uh, the way how the system works and to preserve this, this uh, again, tragedy of uh, throwing away so much food. That dinner sounds fantastic. How yeah. did the uh, recipes go down? Were they well received? Absolutely well received. Yeah. And the key is also to invite uh, chefs and to invite restaurants. It's mm -hmm. very important to cook at home, but also it's very important to create consciousness in, uh, in uh, you know, the important chefs uh, because too often uh, there are also TV programs with celebrity chefs without caring any attention to food waste or without caring any attention, you know, just having fancy recipes and everything. That's not a reality. It's fine, but uh, we have always to think uh, uh, about the responsibility uh, element in uh, when we cook, when we eat, uh, and when we buy food. Mm. We'll have a part to play. Yeah. Um, the Slow Food Initiative is all about eating the food that's produced where it's grown, uh, locally grown, locally consumed. Um, what challenges come along with this, would you say? Yeah, you know, it's important to, to say something about that because clearly uh, the local component is very, is very important. And uh, I would add another component that for us is very important that is uh, <clears throat> also the small scale because we, we think that then, if, of course, it depends, small scale is different from one country to another, is different from Australia to Italy, to make an example. But uh, it's very important to define who is able to produce good, clean and fair food, because very often local food is good, clean and fair, but it's not enough. So it's important to create this shift from uh, uh, an industrial production from food that travels from everywhere in the world, so to put an important focus on local, but uh, to add to the local component all the others, the organic, the environment, the environment uh, the, and the respect of the producers. Because too often, I, and I want to stress this point, too often uh, being a farmer today is something that we no value with young guys, young people, that they don't want to farm, they want, don't want to be involved in food production. It's one of the most important things that, that, that 
a human being can do. We cannot eat smartphones. There is not a future the day that uh, no one will work the land. And young people, and the good news is that in many places, also in the States, that you know, is the country where they created the fast food model, is the fast food country. Especially in some parts of the US, there are many young people that they are proud and they want to go back to the, to the earth. They want to go back to work the land because that is the, one of the most important messages that we can give. So local, but in the, in the big picture and with all the other elements around the, product, the local production. Mm. Uh, I like the idea of uh, you know work, working the land and yeah you know it's always so rewarding when you when you grow your own food even at home in your back garden you can do it absolutely. in pots or you know allotments and that kind of thing as well absolutely and it can make the difference and you know you mentioned gardens is one uh, again to give you an idea about how we work it's one of our global program and uh, only thinking to Africa so thinking to the area to the to the continent that is the paradigm of uh, difficulty in access to food where people are dying because they do not have enough, uh, enough food. We have a program with uh, more than 3,000 gardens mm. uh, that involve uh, a network of around uh, 50,000 producers and all these food gardens are, uh, are, are done with uh, all our principles inside. So local seeds, local uh, products, and uh, caring and putting a lot of attention of the importance of producing. So if you produce food and if you produce fresh and healthy food, you can survive in some places. If you only depend on food coming from 5,000 miles away, you're really in danger. Mm. We've touched on some really interesting topics today. Um, if people who are watching at home um, would like more information about the slow food uh, global movement, um, you're active on a, a number of issues affecting the food system from food waste and climate change to, to slow food travel. Um, how can people find out more information other than tuning into your keynote speech at 12.30 today? Yeah, we have like, a, you can go on our global website slowfood.com and from there of course to access to all the social media and also to access to a lot of uh, other uh, websites and Facebook pages because uh, I represent the, the global movement but it's important to say that we are in 150 countries. In some countries we have uh, national uh, offices and uh, we are organizing what we call uh, local communities. There are uh, more than 2,500 slow food local communities in every corner of the planet. So maybe whoever is interested could try to connect with one of the local groups and the local communities in his or her area to try to understand more about who we are and also maybe to try to contribute to the cause because all these local groups are acting at local level to try to promote our philosophy and our vision. And at the end of the day, also to enjoy, because we think that we have this life, we are what we eat, food can be a good component of our, of, our, of our life, and we think that enjoying some good food together can be part of, a, of the nice part of our lives. It's one of my favorite parts of life anyway. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, we've actually had a message from someone in our online audience, uh, Annie at Kaust. Um, and we're starting a community garden at Kaust um, to encourage community members to grow and eat sustainable food, um, giving the benefits that some of the benefits that we've just talked about. So um, local community groups coming together to 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 grow their own food is, is one way that people can get involved as well. It sounds like Th that is absolutely and definitely a great idea. We have like, uh, <clears throat> as I said, several thousand gardens in. Uh, uh, in many, many, many countries of the world. They are both school gardens and they are community gardens. And my hope for KAUST is that the slow food group can uh, be created in this, uh, in this situation. And for sure, a community garden can be one very good project to start uh, to create a slow food community here. Fantastic. Well, sounds like work's already begun on that one. Absolutely. Um, that's all we have time for today. Um, thanks so much for joining us, Paolo. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. Um, you can tune in Kaust Live tomorrow at 10 a.m. Uh, when we'll be speaking to Priyamvada Natarajan 
about cosmology, gravitational lensing, and black hole physics. Uh, remember to comment, like, and share on all the KAUST social channels, and you can join in the conversation around the festival using hashtag WEP2019. Uh, and everyone from here at KAUST, thanks for watching.